Next on Worcester News Tonight, remembering Trooper Thomas Clardy, the latest from Hudson on funeral arrangements and the man charged in the accident. Plus a look at how people are celebrating St. Patrick's Day in central Massachusetts. Earlier today, Trooper Clardy's body was escorted from the medical examiner's office to a funeral home in Hudson. He was killed Wednesday when his cruiser was hit by another car during a traffic stop in Charlton on the Massachusetts Turnpike. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We'll have reaction from law enforcement in a moment, but first, Michael Rosenfield is in Hudson where funeral arrangements are being finalized for Clardy. It was an emotional day as Trooper Thomas Clardy's body made its way from the medical examiner's office in Boston to the local funeral home in Hudson. To know that someone goes out every day not knowing what's going to happen and um, they could risk their lives, even something as simple as a traffic stop. As the trooper arrived in town, his wife and six children were there to greet the man they love and who never came home after leaving for work on Wednesday. We just wanted to show the family support. It's heartbreaking. My husband's a police officer. What happened yesterday should not have happened. I just, my heart goes out to the family, and all the kids, and his wife. The community came out to pay their respects. Nathan Moulton thought it could be a lesson for his sons Joseph and Jacob. I just hope, you know, they, they learn, uh, you know, what the state troopers and, and all military and everyone else they go through every day. They risk their lives just for us. Flags are at half staff around town and adorn utility poles as well. An electronic billboard at a local hardware store honors the fallen trooper as the town says thank you to the 44-year-old for his service with the Massachusetts State Police and as a Marine Corps veteran. Brian Piazzalevich, a local postal carrier, also served in the military and says he feels like a brother. You never know what, you know, what the next second will bring. You know, it's all, it's all in his plan, so. It's just hard, you know, it makes you think. It made, made me think today while I was walking around, you know, delivering and when it happens in the, you know, the same town you grew up in, it just, it feels closer to home than, you know, than you think. That was our Michael Rosenfield reporting. Now there's been a lot of reaction across the state to what happened yesterday. It's also serving as a reminder about the dangers officers face when out on patrols. Our Patricia Nicholas has that story. The loss of a fellow police officer is never easy. Officers in central Massachusetts are expressing their grief over losing one of their own. The accident also reminding them of the risk they take every day when they conduct traffic stops. But our, certainly our prayers and our thoughts are with, uh, with his family and with the state police and uh, family, friends and other police officers as well. Because uh, I think all of us at one time or another can put ourselves in a position where uh, we were in a case where either we might have had a close call or we know people that uh, were the victims of tragedies like this. They pull that car over, they don't know who's driving that car, they don't know what's in that car. So they have that risk um, that they, the unknown, that they're focusing I mean, all their attention on. And then there's the surrounding risks that they also have to be aware of. In 2009, Massachusetts put into effect the move over law. The law requires drivers who approach an emergency vehicle to move to the next lane. Police say they follow specific protocol before conducting the stop. Sometimes they'll, they'll make space for themselves when they, when they pull a vehicle over. You'll see the car might be out into the travel lane, and that's done on purpose to give the officer an alley to walk, a safe place to walk, so that if, God forbid, something does happen, you know, he won't get struck directly by, by a passing motorist. Officers say every time they pull over someone, they are taking a risk. They say they have to not only pay attention to their surroundings, but also what's going on inside of the vehicle. You never know who you're stopping. Uh, the person could just be uh, a little old lady on her way to church, or it could be a wanted felon. You, you don't know. And so uh, you have to take the precautions and pay attention to the, the people that are in the vehicle. Officers say drivers should be aware of anyone who is in the breakdown lane. Absolutely slow down, move over to that other lane and give that officer, but not only just police officers, tow truck drivers, people that are broken down, give them that extra space to, to do what they have to do, whether it's towing a car, processing a motor vehicle stop, whatever it is. Patricia Nicholas, Worcester News Tonight. David Jaguna, the man authorities say hit Trooper Clardy's car, remains hospitalized tonight. He's been charged with negligent operation of a vehicle and failure to stay within marked lanes. He's also had his license revoked. He will be arraigned in Dudley District Court. 
that this time no court date has been scheduled yet. And today, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker offered his condolences in the death of Trooper Clardy. He and his wife have six kids. The oldest is 17, the youngest is four. Everybody is completely busted up about it. Um, and as a parent, I'm just as busted up as everybody else. And I think it's important that we remember that these men and women really do every day put themselves at risk. And, um, and it's just a shame and a tragedy. Also in Charlton, the police department is clarifying a controversial rap battle Facebook post. Over the weekend, police posted a warning about people in their late teens and 20s approaching children and asking if they wanted to, quote, spit some bars. Now, some were confused by the post and the department received a lot of calls about it. The police chief tells Worcester News tonight that the original post failed to mention that the suspect had suspects had asked the kids to get into the car with them. In a new post on their Facebook page earlier today, the police department said, quote, the posting drew hundreds of comments and phone calls. Most were humorous, some supportive, and some vulgar and threatening. The latter of these, which were not in line with the purpose of the page, is the unfortunate reason we decided to remove the post. We look forward to keeping the public informed and entertained. A fox in Leicester that attacked two people earlier this month had rabies. The attack happened on Route 56 and King Street. Police eventually caught up with the fox and it was killed. Police say the fox has tested positive for rabies. Well, people all over central Massachusetts are taking part in St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Many local businesses are also benefiting from the holiday. Our Olivia, our Olivia Lemon spoke with people who, Irish or not, say the holiday is always fun. Everybody's Irish today. We welcome everybody that's Irish, their friends who want to be Irish. Whether you're Irish or not, everyone is welcome at O'Connor's Restaurant and Bar. Owner Brendan O'Connor says St. Patrick's Day is the busiest day of the year at the Worcester restaurant. And we've been full now since 1130 and we hope to uh, to help everybody who'd like dinner and come out with their friends and their families and their neighbors. The atmosphere is friends, family, just just a family oriented place. O'Connor says he expects to see about 2000 customers over the course of the day. We're all proud to be Irish today. And we're particularly proud to have all our guests, so Worcester County guests here, and from beyond that. It's an exciting time of the year. It's, everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's wearing green. If Irish or not, if everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day, and it's so true. At Fairway Beef in Worcester, co-owner George Siegel says the weeks leading up to St. Patrick's Day are busy for him. This time of the year, it's St. Patrick's corned beef time. Siegel says a lot of customers call ahead of time to order their corned beef for the St. Patrick's holiday. We make it ourselves. I'm kind of proud of it. It's fun to, uh, you know, driving around, seeing all the green and the, and the sheer rocks everywhere and everyone just happy and uh, go lucky. Meanwhile, at Worcester City Hall Common, the McInerney School of Irish Dance performed Irish step dances. We were asked by um, city manager's office if we would come and help celebrate St. Patrick's Day with everybody here. McInerney says no matter where you are on St. Patrick's Day in central Massachusetts, you are sure to be entertained. Happy St. Patrick's Day! That was our Olivia Lemon reporting. A lot of green in that story for sure. While staying in Worcester, a family is suing the city's police department along with state police after a raid inside their apartment last August. Well, that's according to the Telegram. Marianne Diaz, Brian Aliquin, and Joshua Matos were inside their apartment on Hillside Street on August 19th when they say SWAT team members burst in. They claim they were treated badly and suffered emotional distress. They also allege they have spent more than $9,000 on medical bills as a result of the raid. Authorities had been looking for a man who they thought was keeping guns inside his apartment. A surprise celebration took place today for the staff of the Worcester Public Health Department. The group is the first accredited public health department in the city. Out of 5,000 health departments in the country, Worcester's DPH is now part of the 117 to receive this award. To get the award, the department must meet every standard and measure to deliver the best public health services to the community. And feel good about knowing that the services that they're being provided are the best um, that can be offered, that um, you know, we're open to hearing what's going on in the community, that the people here really care about what's going on in the community and the issues. Clark added she is honored to reach this gold level of standards and the department is already planning on ways to get 
accredited again in five years when this one expires. Again, they are the first in the state. Worcester is seen purple today after the Holy Cross men won last night's game, winning an NCAA tournament game for the first time since 1953. The Crusaders have grabbed national attention, and here in the city, the excitement continues to grow. Our Brittany Schaefer has a look at the following that Holy Cross is gaining. A sea of purple watches the Holy Cross men's basketball team take home a historic win. Patrick Kerrigan played for Holy Cross last year and knows the team better than most. Kerrigan says he didn't think the team would make it thus far. I don't even think they expect to be doing like this well now, but like game after the game, like you can tell that belief was just growing. It's really great to see them really put a string together from a season that wasn't all that successful. Holy Cross alum Patrick Maloney is a former men's basketball manager. He was part of a Crusaders team who made it to the NCAA tournament. Maloney says after a few rough years, he believes the Crusaders are back on track, and this winning streak has really lifted the spirits of Worcester. It's great to have Division I sports in the city of Worcester, and to have some success really shows how quickly the city can get behind uh, you know, a winner. It gives Worcester like, a real sense of pride. I mean, having this team that we can like, gravitate towards and hold on to. I saw it a lot when I was at Holy Cross. Like, the support we got from Worcester was amazing. Mike Ehrlich owns the perfect game. He says the crowd Wednesday night was cheering, chanting, and throwing beer in happiness when the game ended. Everybody had a Holy Cross jersey on, sweatshirt. Uh, some of the alumni uh, had, had, had worn the same thing, uh, same, same amounts of purple, but it was a sea of purple. Uh, a perfect game last night. Ehrlich says Wednesday night was 10 times busier than any Super Bowl game. I think it's a great community event. Uh, it's certainly fantastic for, the, for our business and I'm sure all the other sports bars and, and restaurants in the city. Football player JT Frank says the basketball team's success puts the entire school in national spotlight. Put Holy Cross on the map. It's a very small school in Worcester, Massachusetts, and even my friends getting texts in San Francisco and San Diego. We can't upset and hopefully go uh, a game or two farther in, in the tournament. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. The Crusaders have a tough game tomorrow night. They will face top-seeded Oregon out in Washington. The team's bandwagon is growing. Earlier today, we caught up with the mayor to talk about what Holy Cross's presence in the tournament means for the city. Well, people will watch the game tomorrow. I know it's hard to get to Washington, uh, the state of Washington, but I think uh, a lot of the uh, restaurants and, and pubs will probably be very busy tomorrow night with Holy Cross alumni and people from the city of Worcester on the state of Massachusetts cheering, cheering them on.